I'm Jared. Uh, as John said, uh, I'm the head of product at Rebel Mouse. Um, quick background as to what that means, head of product, because in different industries, um, it means a bunch of different things. My uh, past career life, I ran product at the Huffington Post um, with the founder of Rebel Mouse, Paul Berry, was the chief technology officer. Uh, then went to run product at Time Inc. and then at Rebel Mouse. And basically what I see with product and the value of it is really to come up with technologies that are favorable for the consumer and for the client. Uh, my focus at Rebel Mouse and at Time Inc. and at the Huffington Post was really to figure out what's going to sell. Um, we've seen with Twitter and Facebook and a lot of consumer uh, side technologies that when it comes to making money, there's often difficulty to find that solution because you're just slapping labels on uh, the product itself. Where uh, what we tried to do at Rebel Mouse um, and what a lot of brands and uh, publishers and uh, technologies are trying to do now is figure out what's going to sell, how do we leverage that knowledge to build an awesome product that's going to suit both consumer side and commercial side. Um, as everyone in here probably knows, everything about advertising has changed. Uh, whether it's print or digital or television, um, costs have changed, um, competition has changed, the battle between publisher and brand um, is ongoing, brands looking uh, through programmatic and other means uh, to buy inventory at a cheaper scale, but also work on bigger campaigns. Uh, to be able to engage the right audience and do something new and innovative. Uh, where publishers are really trying to figure out what could I do that's going to be different um, than what my competing publisher does. And you've seen, and I'll get into later, um, brands like, or publishers like BuzzFeed and uh, Forbes and Gawker who have really taken that to the next level, understanding the product that's going to sell and leveraging it. Where others, uh, like where I was at Time Inc., um, have really struggled to really play catch up and figure that sort of thing out. So um, in an era, especially with digital, um, where clicks are everything and the click-through rate average is 0 0.01, um, it's kind of very dull and scary <laughs> when you're focusing on what products to create that are going to benefit those uh, key performance indicators. It's actually a photo I took. I was just in Zimbabwe. Um, <laughs> so what's not working? I mean, we know um, that a major, major, major issue is um, the new generation, the millennials. How are they consuming content? How are they engaging with content? You know, um, the Mad Men um, and the idea of what a Mad Men was and is is no longer valuable, uh, especially for brands and clients to engage the consumer. Nobody wants somebody to come in and present them with an idea that's going to be the next idea. They want to be able to leverage what they know is working and be able to get their community and their consumers to engage and help create the media that they're going to then be distributing. So we see um, companies like uh, Gary Vayner's company, VaynerMedia, and Silverback Social, um, and a few others that are really saying, OK, we know brands love uh, likes. We know they love follows. We know that uh, they actually know the consumer's name that's engaging with them, and that's so valuable to them. So how do you leverage that and think of it by going in a new direction? You know, you really need to um, understand what that consumer wants, on um, what platform they're going to be on, and then how do you leverage that across all the different mediums that you're then looking to distribute on? Um, so what are we supposed to do? I mean, we um, are are constantly challenged, again, between brands and publishers with coming up with new ideas and what's next. You know, uh, uh, people or, or someone that I was speaking to puts it very well, where we, we, we always took the vitamin of, or, or sorry, we always took the pain pill of what we thought that we should do and we're selling these things just to get a quick fix. But now you really need to train these clients and consumers to take their vitamins, that they need these technologies and they need these certain things. So I'm going to focus on a few trends, one being native. You know, when uh, at the Huffington Post and at BuzzFeed, uh, when they realized, OK, banner ads aren't working, we're not getting the clients that we want, we're not getting the click-throughs we want, how do we leverage the awesome technology we have to be able to engage those users? So they came up with native, which is basically in-stream content marketing ads. It's nothing new. And the argument at Time Inc. was always advertorial is 100 years old, but they weren't leveraging it the same way. And it was a new way to make money. Um, amazing ad technologies and targeting technologies like Critio um, that really came up with new ideas of basically saying, 
when you're on a page, you want to be targeted with a 300 by 250 or 300 by 600 that's relevant and, and, and important to you. So I always had a thing um, that I would talk about where if I was going shopping online on Zappos or whatever and I liked a pair of shoes or sneakers, I would always say, well, if I think about it three more times, I'll actually buy it because that was a saving method. And then technologies like Criteo come out and every single website you're on, you see those shoes. So I start spending and spending and spending. And it's just an amazing way to really understand, okay, what are the behaviors that we're taking and how do we create new ways to uh, kind of deliver experiences to the users? Um, this is a key thing, you know, media can be bought or owned, we know this, you know, we pay, um, we pay to deliver ads, um, publishers get paid and end networks get paid uh, to host those ads, but attention must always be earned. Again, that 0.01 click-through rate is so terrible, and it's not, people say the banner ad is dead, it's not that the banner ad is dead, it's just that the media and the content and stuff flowing through there is not getting um, that person's trust. They're not wanting to engage with it, they're looking past it. I mean. I'm not gonna do what, every, what a lot of people do and say raise your hand if you click on banner ads because nobody's really clicking on them. Um, so what needs to be done and with the technologies and products that we're building is really figure out how do you get that user? And not only how do you get that user, once you get that user, how do you rope them in to then get them to repeat and do things for your brand um, and your publisher? So brands as media companies uh, is a huge trend right now. All brands have to be media companies. Uh, some brands that do it so well are IBM and GE. Um, and Kraft and a few others that really say, okay, um, we're the experts in this content. You know, IBM did an amazing thing where they had a Smarter Planet blog, which was smarterplanetblog. Uh, I think it was like a blogspot.com <laughs> that was through IBM, where they were creating amazing content, and they're the experts in technology and data and sysadmins and stuff like that. So what they said was, we're not getting any clicks to our blog and we're doing all this paid media that's not getting any um, engagements either. Let's take the blogs that we're already creating on a smarter planet and distribute it through Forbes and distribute it through Engadget. And then all of a sudden they see they're getting those likes, they're getting those favorites, they're getting those retweets. Because when you're on Forbes, who better to read about the future of technology or the best way to um, support cloud security than the head of cloud security at IBM? So brands are really starting to come up with these ideas to really say what's next and I'm going to be the thought leader in this environment. An awesome example too talking about GE is that they just did a campaign called GE Hashtag Pressing uh, where they partnered with the Washington Post, Politico, NBC, Fox News, uh, and Vox Media to have them create content for the GE Pressing brand. And what was amazing is that they then took all that content that they were creating and distributed it through 300 by 600 ad units on all of these different sites and delivered actual content to the user. And what was really a great learning from that uh, program is that when you're on a web page and you're reading content about a certain subject, you automatically assume that on the right rail or in that ad, it should be something that's relevant to what you're reading because then you're gonna click. And what was found with the GE Pressing campaign is when people were on msnbc.com or cnn.com reading content from the far left or from the left, um, the ads that got the most engagements were the ones that had Fox News content, that had the conservative view and the opposite view because they were more interested in saying, okay, I read this, now show me the opposite view or suggest something new to me, not I'm gonna read the same thing I just read. So uh, there's a lot of things that companies like GE, companies like IBM learn about and then they capitalize and engage on those things. And it's really kind of just opening up the playing field to really uh, come up with innovation um, and new products. So um, brands looking to engage beyond the stream. This is actually a cool fact. I think this is the only uh, actual statistic I have in here, but new data says traffic to brand marker sites was 47% greater than traffic to Facebook in 2013. So we know it's working. You know, the idea of a microsite um, really died out and uh, it, uh, people have, have such a bitter taste in their mouth whenever you mention the word microsite, but there's technologies to use that basically have that site have a pulse. So it shouldn't just be static. It shouldn't just be uh, content that never gets refreshed. You should be pulling in your social feeds, all your own media, everything into one place and really become that destination. And then use the information that you're getting of how people are engaging with that content to then distribute out through all these paid means. 
Um, the message only begins its life when you hit publish. This is awesome, especially with brands that are creating content and what they're doing. Once they create that content, especially on a BuzzFeed or uh, on a Forbes, they see what's the A-B testing with my headline. What are the dark posts on Facebook and social? And after that piece of content is actually published on the website it's living on or in the ad unit, they're constantly looking at the backend data to see how it's performing and how to optimize based on that. So these brands are working with certain technologies that basically say, okay, we're gonna do certain headlines for your ad units, we'll do certain headlines for your Facebook posts, and depending on what's clicking best, we're gonna optimize and have those stir up. And of course, the engagement rates go up based on that. Um, the other thing is to really know what content is going to resonate best with the users. And I'll talk about this a little later where we have the idea of programmatic and it's amazing, but then what's the other side of programmatic? If you could buy media cheap and you're delivering it and you don't have to worry about transactions and hand-to-hand -hand, uh, exchanges, how do you know that the user is going to get the right content that they're going to want to engage with because you're just going to end up where you are now? Cool. So this is going back to the millennials, that they really want to be a part of this. This is a campaign that Spotify did, which is amazing, where they basically had hashtag that song when. And they tweeted out from the Spotify account and from Facebook and from Instagram and said, hey, tell us that song when you did something. So that song when I had my first kiss, that song when I had a first dance, the, that song when I first drove in my car. Um, and what Spotify did was they got the users to engage. They were after they would pull in the hashtags of that song when and feature it on a page, they would then shoot an app mention or an email or something to that user that says, hey, check it out, you're featured on Spotify.com. So that then creates this chain reaction of saying, oh my God, I'm featured on Spotify, I love Spotify, I'm gonna tell my mom and dad and so on and so forth and whatever. But the cool part is they took it a step further where they then were asking permission from the users as they pulled that content in to put it in their paid media. So in their paid media, they would have you know, banner ads, again, that have a sort of pulse, where they would then deliver these banner ads that are pulling in content from people like you and me that are participating in the campaign, and that's relevant to them. So it's really a way where Spotify now said, we're not paying um, a head of creative, or we're not paying a huge agency to do all this creative for us that's going to get 0.01 clicks. We're actually going to employ our consumers, people that love our brand, and we're going to use technologies that are going to get permissions and allow us to scale that you know, beyond just a page, but through paid media as well, which is really awesome. Um, another Zimbabwe picture. Don't, <laughs> don't rely on search. Your audience is out there. Now go and find them. The idea of content discovery is huge um, right now, which is kind of what we've been discussing, but people are saying that search is gonna go away and discovery is the new thing. Before, it was so important to make sure that when people were looking for a certain topic or for a certain piece of content or subject, that your brand was on top of that list. So obviously Google um, AdWords is the first one that always comes to mind, where if you search for the Jets, the Giants wanna make sure that they're first up there, right? So, or Baltimore Redskins, I guess. Um, but the idea of discovery is so huge now where brands are actually taking initiative and going to where they know the consumers are going to be. You know, with Twitter cards is a huge one where they're creating media, particularly for Twitter, and they're going to be uh, targeting someone that's looking for a specific thing based on hashtags or it's just going to be in their feed based on the data that we already have on them. You know, um, what's amazing is at Time Inc., there was a product we created called Amplify, where we basically had all this subscriber data of people that signed up for print magazines in the past 65 years at Time Inc. across all 28 brands. And we partnered with Axiom, which is a data company, but then with Apple to match that subscriber data and those home addresses with their Apple ID accounts. So then we knew that Jared Dicker, who lived at 601 East 20th Street in New York, was also Apple ID Jared Dicker, so we would target him with Sports Illustrated ads because we know what he likes. So brands are really going above and beyond, taking advantage of data and really going directly towards the consumer without waiting for them to search and find them. Uh, embrace the robots, programmatic. Um, a lot of people are freaked out about it, but it's actually amazing, you know, because it opens up yet another door to solve a problem. You know, uh, programmatic is amazing on the exchange side um, and on the RTB side, and it really allows um, brands and agencies to buy media efficiently, you know, at a certain cost and allows them to um, 
kind of get that message across or publishers to really fill their inventory, you know, that otherwise would not be fulfilled. But what that really opens for us is the ability to say, okay, well then how do we build bigger experiences? There's going to be bigger ad campaigns that need support from agencies that are going to be cool and creative and we don't have to worry about these type of things anymore. And there's so many things that are going to come with programmatic as with everything um, that's, that's in the advertising world that once these things come in, new issues arise that then need solutions from agencies and publishers to really think beyond what they're currently doing. Um, techno technology needs to invite consumers to participate and change it. So this is what I referenced earlier with programmatic. You know, we learned that when ads are being delivered to the users at an efficient uh, cost, that's great because we're saving money, but how do we know that what they're seeing is what they're getting? And with the GE pressing campaign, we know that the engagements were so great because the content that we were delivering to them is something that they were actually interested in that we were using data behind. So what's awesome for publishers, brands, and technology companies is that they're beginning to innovate and really figure out, okay, what's the next step? that is going to be a game changer you know, in, in the industry. So what we're seeing and what I'm seeing and what I'm really trying to focus on now is very personal type experiences. You know, we, we have cookie data. Um, we have data based on uh, kind of Facebook and users and geolocation data and stuff like that. So I want to be able to have a product that when um, person A and person B goes to the same domain URL, they're served a different experience based on what they're most interested in. So some companies are doing this right now where they're partnering with publishers and they basically say, if I'm interested in sports and my wife is interested in, um, say, news, you know, when, she, when we go to this page, we'll get different types of experiences. And there's technologies out there that are already thinking about that. Everyone knows that mobile is everything. Um, it's, it's, it's been extremely difficult um, to really capitalize on it. One, only 1% 1 of uh, ad buys are actually going to mobile. And I think, I don't want to misquote, but um, I want to say 7% is going to print. So the, the spending is still going to print over mobile. And that's because there's been difficulties. There's no cookie data on mobile. So it's been very difficult to really figure out how am I going to um, hit that right user, and um, what technologies could I use to make sure I hit that right user? The other thing is that screen is so tiny, like it's terrible. So when you had these big, beautiful print ads that were spread to spreads, or you have these huge homepage takeovers on, on desktop sites that are awesome, and you have missiles and stuff flowing in, how are you going to compete from a creative perspective you know, when you have that tiny, tiny little screen? Um, now we have the iPhone. 6 plus, but still, it's tiny. Um, so there's cool things that are basically happening. Um, f uh, the announcement with Twitter and with Twitter with MoPub and Facebook with Atlas that they announced yesterday, which basically they're saying, we're gonna take all that data that we collect on Facebook about the users, which we've all voluntarily give them everything, and we're gonna use that to then retarget on mobile. So now you're not saying a cookie per se, but you, they already have all your information, similar to what I was saying with the iTunes IDs and matching them. So now we're saying when you're on a certain website because you have the Facebook app downloaded, because you have the Twitter app downloaded, because you have all this information that you voluntarily give up, advertisers can now retarget you and get the message to you that you're going to want to see. Um, the other thing as well is Snapchat, Vine these huge applications and social applications that are mobile only um, are totally taking over in the brand space. You know, there's so many agencies and companies out there that literally are paying Vine stars um, $100,000, $200,000 a year to make a six second video that's brought to you by Clorox because it gets a thousand revines, or a thousand, a million revines um, and all these different things. Snapchat Stories, which hasn't even yet to be proven as successful, is new and exciting. Uh, which basically just allows brands to create a series of um, photos and videos that then disappear in 24 hours. But all of these things are mobile only. The focus is there. I think right now $20 billion is spent in the States on mobile advertising per year. And uh, a study came out yesterday that it's going to be $60 billion uh, in uh, 2018. So the dollars are there. People are figuring it out. But again, you know, it's been figuring out how do we surpass the cookie issues? And then how do we surpass those creative issues? Because especially from the agency perspective, it's not ideal to create things on such a small screen. 
So in conclusion, you know, we're left here saying, OK, there's all these new things coming out. It's an open playing field. What are we going to do? And I think basically the main objective for me um, as, as a product lead and for a lot of uh, people that I talk to in the agency and publishing world is really to just put your content where your audience is. So really figure out who's your core audience, what are they going to want to engage with, what are they going to want to read, and then be able to distribute that through your paid media, through your social buys, Twitter, Facebook, and be able to leverage based on what you know is working across all those different platforms. You know, again, to talk about um, Gary V, uh, Gary V and VaynerMedia has done such a good job building social profiles and companies um, on social, and they love, again, they love the ROI and the KPI they get from that. So what's stopping them from utilizing all that content that they know engages the user directly and distribute it through those other paid means? Um, Another example that's way overused, but it always hits home, is the Oreo Dunk in the Dark uh, campaign, where in 2012, I think, Super Bowl, um, or 2013 Super Bowl, when uh, the power went out at the Superdome, Oreo, Bon and Bo, had his team tweet out in Facebook posts a picture of an Oreo in the dark that says, you could still dunk in the dark, and everyone went nuts. But at that same time on ESPN.com, there was a 728 by 90 and 300 by 250 banner ad that was like a rainbow with an Oreo on it that nobody was clicking on. So where Mondelez and Oreo is going is that when those moments happen, those viral moments that you know is what your audience is going to want to read, you need a technology and the ability to then say, OK, that tweet is going viral. Let's put that into all our paid media. So then when I go to ESPN.com, uh, I see the Oreo dunk in the dark ad. I click on it because I can't believe how relevant um, and, uh, and real time it was. So. Um, that's it. Thank you.